solving multi-step problems with rational numbers. Let's review some tips for solving problems with rational numbers. Pay close attention to keywords that indicate positives or negatives. Remember rules for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational numbers. Use order of operations when necessary. Brianna works as a customer service representative. She knows that the amount of her yearly bonus is $155, but $2.50 is taken away for each customer complaint about her during the year. What is her bonus if there are 12 complaints about her in the year? Let's pull out some key information from this word problem. We know Brianna's yearly bonus is $155. We also know that $2.50 is taken away from each customer complaint. So we're going to combine 155 with a negative $2.50. We also know that there are 12 complaints about her during the year. So we're going to multiply negative 2.50 by 12. Again, we have two parentheses next to each other. Parentheses right now is indicating multiplication. Let's use order of operations to solve this expression that we wrote. First is parentheses. We don't have anything to evaluate inside parentheses. We have negative 2.50, which isn't going to be changed, and we have 12 inside different parentheses. So let's cross that out. Next is exponents. We don't have any exponents, so we can cross that out as well. Next is multiplication and division from left to right. Well, looking, we only have multiplication. We don't have any division. So let's evaluate that. I'm going to bring down my 155 so I can save that for later. Now I have negative 2.50 times 12. That will give us negative 30. I can now cross off multiplication and division. Lastly, we have addition and subtraction from left to right. I only see addition. So 155 plus negative 30 equals 125. We're done with addition and subtraction, and we have our answer. Brianna's bonus for the year is $125. Last week, Julian ran four and two-fifths miles per day for four days. During the same week, he also walked one and three-fourths miles per day on six days. What was the total number of miles Julian ran and walked last week? Let's pull out key information from this word problem. We know that Julian ran four and two-fifths miles. This happened per day, which means he ran four and two-fifths miles in one day. Then four and two-fifths miles on the next day. This happened for four days. So let's multiply four and two-fifths by four. Again, we are using parentheses here to indicate multiplication. He also walked one and three-fourths miles per day. So let's add one and three fourths. This happened six days. So we're going to multiply one and three fourths times six. We are using parentheses here to indicate multiplication. We have fractions with uncommon denominators. So we can either find common denominators or we can convert these fractions to decimals, which is what I'm gonna do. So we have four as a whole number, two divided by five is 0.4. One is a whole number. Three divided by four is 0.75. In order to evaluate this expression, let's use order of operations. First, we have parentheses. I see parentheses in these expressions, but they're being used to indicate multiplication. I know this because there's nothing to evaluate inside the parentheses, and we have parentheses sitting right next to each other. Right, so we have 4.4 .4 times four. So we're gonna cross off parentheses because we're gonna use that later. Exponents, we don't have any exponents, so let's cross that off. Now we have multiplication and division from left to right. So we're going to multiply from left to right. First we have 4.4 .4 times four. That will give us 17.6. Let's bring down our addition sign and now we have 1.75 times six. That will give us 
10.5. Let's cross off multiplication and division. Lastly, we have addition and subtraction from left to right. I only have one more operation to perform. I have addition. So 17.6 plus 10.5 equals 28.1. I can cross off the last layer of my order of operations. Julian ran and walked a total of 28.1 miles last week. Olivia has $650 to spend at an electronics store. All the prices listed below include tax. She buys a laptop for $399.99. She buys two pairs of headphones for $39.99 each and a speaker for $150.95. She plans to use the remaining money to buy phone cases for $8.25 each. What is the greatest number of phone cases that Olivia can buy with the remaining money? Let's pull out the important information from this word problem. Olivia has $650. That's her budget. She buys a laptop for $399.99. So let's combine that with $650. Since she's purchasing that, it's going to be a negative. She also buys two pairs of headphones for $39.99 each. That means that one pair of headphones costs $39.99. So let's combine this with negative 39.99 times two. We're using parentheses to indicate multiplication. She also buys a speaker for $150.95. So let's combine that by adding negative 150.95. Since we don't know how many phone cases she's going to be able to purchase, let's worry about that later. We're going to evaluate this expression to see how much money she has left after these purchases. So we're going to use order of operations. First, let's start with parentheses. Again, our parentheses right now are used to indicate multiplication or to just clean up our expression if we have a negative value. So we don't have anything to evaluate inside parentheses. Let's cross that out. Next, we have exponents, but there are no exponents in this expression. Next, we have multiplication and division from left to right. Whatever is not multiplication or division, I'm going to bring down so we can evaluate later. Negative 39.99 times 2 is negative 79.98. I can now cross out multiplication and division. Lastly, we have addition and subtraction from left to right. So I'm going to evaluate the rest of this expression, reading it from left to right. 650 plus negative 399.99 is 250.01. 250.01 plus negative 79.98 equals 170.03. 170.03 plus negative 150.95 equals 19.08. We can cross off addition and subtraction. This means that Olivia has $19.08 left after she bought the laptop, the two pairs of headphones, and the speaker. Now looking back at the word problem, she's going to buy phone cases for $8.25 each. We are being asked to find the greatest number of phone cases she can buy with the remaining money. So in order to solve that, we are going to break our remaining money up into groups of 8.25 each. So let's divide by 8.25. When we divide these two numbers, we will get 2.3127 repeating. We put that line over 27 because those are the two digits that are repeating infinitely. This number is telling us that Olivia can buy two phone cases and a little bit more of another phone case. Now she's not going to break the phone case and purchase some of it. That would be inconvenient and the store surely won't allow her to do that. So we can say that the greatest number of phone cases Olivia can buy is two. Let's review our tips for solving problems with rational numbers. Pay close attention to keywords that indicate positives or negatives. Remember rules for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational numbers. 
And lastly, use order of operations.